2011's Sleeping Beauty review and thoughts. And let's see. If you're looking for a review that talks about the movie doesn't really hold up, it's been outdone by little movies. Because of that, it's not that much fun to watch today. Whether you agree with that assessment or not, this is not that review. I realize this video is long. I'm doing what I can to make it worth your time. And I start the video with a review where I'm almost definitely not going to spoil anything. If I, over the course of the video, decide that I want to spoil something in the review section, I'm going to verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers. You can mute and skip ahead and you see me lower my index finger. If I only raise my finger, th that does not mean that I'm going to be spoiling something if I don't also say it verbally. And, uh, yeah, as soon as I end the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. So... I am a lifelong feminist, but I am an aloe cis het man. As such, I've never lived as a woman, cis or trans. I try to show empathy and listen to the lived experience of women. I am aware I have dead spots. As such, I might accidentally say something ignorant. So if any feminist woman is bothered by something I say in one of my videos, please let me know. I am open to editing that part out. And if it's a case where the whole video is bad, taking it down. Everything I say about any minority that I don't belong to, which is all of them, is based on what I've heard left-leaning members of those minorities say, for example, in other YouTube videos. And uh, I realize I sometimes say things I know certain people on the left don't love. I'm extremely careful to almost always base what I personally say on what I've heard other left-leaning straight white cis men motivated by empathy for minorities say, basically figuring if it's okay for them to say, it must be okay for me. And let's see. The, um, yes. So this movie, um, when you go to IMDb, it says TV 14, even though it was, yeah. Um, certainly it is, you know, it's the equivalent of an R, basically. Right, uh, another th also on, on IMDb it says TVMA. So the, the um, yeah, as the IMDb Parents Guide points out, sex and nudity is severe, violence and gore is mild, profanity, alcohol, drugs, and smoking are moderate, and so is frightening and intense scenes. And... I am going to be discussing some of this material over the course of the video. I definitely do think that it makes a lot of sense to have issue with the sexuality and nudity and the, yeah, the way it depicts them. And it is the kind of movie where it's not there just to... to you know, ju just to, to get people to watch, who only watch stuff that has sex and nudity. And, right, also, um, I'm 100%, you know, anything positive I might say in this video, I'm not saying that any woman who disagrees is, is wrong at all. For, uh, yeah, made my point. Moving on, so... Yes, I have watched this once. I record this right after finishing my viewing. And, yeah, uh, the plot, IMDb, quote here, A haunting portrait of Lucy, a young university student drawn into a mysterious hidden world of unspoken desires. And the... Yeah, the movie, IMDb lists it as drama, mystery, romance. I'm not sure I really see where the romance comes in. It definitely is a drama. I mean, there's mysterious aspects. Yeah, I don't know. But definitely drama, for sure. And, yeah, you know, so... This movie explores the misogynist preoccupation with the the female form, which, you know, the movie is as relevant 
as it was when it came out 13 years ago. You know, as I record this, there are, you know, misogynist YouTubers who are freaking out about the fact that, you know, Sidney Sweeney showed some cleavage on SNL. And if you don't, if you aren't already familiar with the context, when I say those words, you might not yet know, are they in favor of it or are they against it? Because they keep going back and forth. You know, is, is it pro trad wife or are they saying that us on the far left are you know preventing women from looking good in media you know so to clear that up they are in favor of it they're saying that her cleavage destroys wokeness which just like yeah they they live in a world of their own they have no idea where there is not a unified movement on the air on the far left that says women can't be attractive we're just saying that shouldn't be the only thing they're allowed to do there should also be depth to you know their their character yeah so the the you know honestly if this movie was made today i think really the only thing that you know should, they they would probably choose someone who was curvier i think by you know misogynists today would say that emily browning is not sufficiently you know conventionally attractive so let's see the yes uh this was both written and directed by julia lee and yeah uh, she's actually normally a novelist, but she does love movies. She's not, you know, it's not just, you know, some, sometimes, the, the, you know, it's like, well, you wrote the book, come make the movie, and it's like, they don't know how to make a movie, but it, yeah. Um, she also wrote the book for the 2011 film The Hunter, but apparently she didn't write the screenplay for, no. So this is the only movie she's written, the only movie she's directed. As far as I've been able to tell from, from research, she would like to direct more, you know. And the, the it's, it's based in part on this nightmare she had where the, the what's the word? She... Yeah, she had a nightmare where she was being, you know, watched over while she, let's see, right, a recurring nightmare. She had that someone was watching her while she slept. And that's, yeah. And let's see. Um... Yes, uh, I only found nine YouTube videos that deal with this movie at all. Three of them are summing up the movie, and it's one of those... Th if you've watched very many of those, you know that it can be very mixed quality sometimes for, for those. Two of the videos are interviews, one with Emily Browning. I only found four v other videos that are, you know, this is the fifth video that's review and or analysis of the movie and I will say the the analysis review videos are good and I uh, let's see I believe I am linking them in the I'm gonna make sure right now that they are going to be linked in the description box but yeah I definitely think that this is you know, th there could be significantly more. Uh, what's the word? Huh. I guess I, I completely forgot to copy in those links. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna make a quick note to myself. Copy in the links. There we go. Now, there are definitely men in the real world who pay a lot of money in order to experience women that are sexually objectified 
whether they're looking or touching, even if they aren't actually having sex. And I do think that it's important to point out this exploitation because, of course, this kind of work will appeal to, to young women who are looking for financial independence and find that it's very difficult for them to get a job that pays well for them to, to you know, have a, a career. The, the you know, yeah, it's it, the, the gender pay gap is sadly very real. And let's see the yeah um, you know the the men in the in this film treat young women as objects sometimes sex objects uh, you know not always but but only like objects or potential labor you know some people have hired her to, to do various odd jobs. And, you know, there, to be clear, there's nothing inherently wrong with movies that feature at least one woman each in sexual situations that are undignified as long as it's an intelligent exploration of how she ended up in that situation, how it affects her. You know, Michael Haneke's The Piano Teacher does all of these things and let's see, you know, a, a movie is not automatically bad because the female protagonist is raped. I'm not going to give away in the review itself whether or not rape occurs in this. But, you know, Monster from 2003 and The Nightingale are also about protagonists, are about protagonists who are raped, but they center their narratives on what it does to these women in a very honest and heartbreaking way. And I think a very strong case could be made that this movie does not really explore so much... <sighs> Emily Browning's character, Lucy, is a bit of an enigma. We don't really know very much about what motivates her and I definitely do appreciate this was purposeful. This was not the, the you know, it's not that this was made by someone who just doesn't think that it's possible for women to have a rich inner world or someone who only views them as objects. I don't love that it could easily be mistaken for that. And I do definitely appreciate it is actually, you know, it's basically taking the male gaze and pushing it to an extreme. You know, the, the, the male gaze being this thing of, you know, the camera will ogle a woman's body in a way that just isn't, very frequently isn't the case for, for male characters. You know, Dan Olson did a fantastic video a while back on the Fifty Shades trilogy, where in he talked about how, you know, in the first movie, there's this bit where where a Christian is filmed in a way that seems to be for, you know, straight women and gay men to to you know appreciate what he looks like, and the you know after the first one i think it's both 2 and 3 dan olson talks about the they just don't really have anything like that and it probably was that there were you know some people were uncomfortable with that you know it's there's this idea that it's okay to sexualize women you know in in film and and on TV and such and let's see and and yeah you know one of the the one of the things with this movie is it gives some of the worst people in the world exactly what they want the camera ogles this young woman who's semi nude or even outright naked you know, and she she feels she has no choice but to do this. 
There are a number of misogynists for whom it's not enough that the woman is young, conventionally attractive, and willing to have sex with them. They want the woman to have no power in the situation. Some of these guys will freak out if the woman wants to be on top, or if she has much say over the sex. Here's a movie where the protagonist genuinely has no control, where men... Uh, so who don't, yeah, men who don't want an equal, they want a sex slave... And, you know, I, I saw, I'm, I'm afraid I forget the, the source, but someone pointed out recently, a number of misogynists insist that women are most attractive before age 25. Age 25 is when a human being's brain is fully developed. You know, without openly saying it, these misogynists are admitting they actually don't want their partner to be at the peak of the human ability to understand the world around us, make informed decisions. Incidentally, a number of the most beloved men in the manosphere are not younger than 25 and are specifically praised for how smart they are, which is especially ridiculous considering how easy it is to see through a lot of the BS they say. I'm not going to restate here the arguments from all the excellent videos right here on YouTube that tear apart manosphere arguments. I do recommend looking them up after watching this. And let's see... You know, a case has been made that it's not only the men in this film that treat the young women as nothing but sex objects. It is the camera, the editing, the direction, the movie itself. And, you know, I'm, I will be linking the excellent written review by... Uh, what's, blanking on the name. Uh, Marianne Johansson. In general, excellent reviewer. You know, the, the, um, yeah, um, she points out, you know, basically the, the movie feels like a betrayal, you know, in part because it was a, a woman directing it. And yes, I am indeed exploring this as part of Women's History Month for the, the, yeah, the discourse on misogyny and, and objectification of women. A number of reviewers, user reviewers, don't even seem to understand that the movie's trying to criticize voyeurism. They mistake it for simply another example of voyeurism and may not even realize that anybody takes issue with voyeurism. I mean, obviously it wouldn't be good if there were a bunch of misogynists just saying in their reviews that they understand it's criticizing voyeurism and they don't think that it should be. But at least if that was the case, it would displays a media literacy. It's pretty gross how many people include in their review that they liked ogling Emily Browning without at all questioning if they're supposed to feel comfortable doing it, much less saying that it was a good thing about the movie. Some say it's the only good thing. At least one person said they felt the sex scenes were more awkward than sexy and seemed to stop short of realizing maybe that was the point. You know, there's this idea that sex scenes are basically you know masturbation aid you know that they exist so that you can yeah and i yeah i i long since lost count of how many times i've come across movies that actually explore sexuality and feature sex scenes that are intentionally awkward and people will say in review, user reviews, oh, you know, I, I thought the sex scenes were kind of awkward. Without real, like, I, maybe I mentioned this one too much, but Black Swan, the, the which I guess also came in, 20, 2011, I think also, so somewhere around there at least, uh, you know, Natalie Portman, Mila Kunis, excellent movie. The sexuality in that movie is specifically supposed to be awkward, you know. It's, it's, incredible to me that there are people who don't appreciate like you're you're allowed to think that that was the wrong choice but to not even understand that that was purposeful you know to, I'm, what i'm trying to get at is we here in the west i'm i'm not equipped to speak about the rest of the world but we here in the west definitely have we earthers have hang-ups when it comes to sex and that's definitely something that needs to be explored until we get to a point where we can have more informed conversations without 
someone saying, yeah, but this didn't make me want to jack off, though. Uh, one person said they thought it was gross that the film featured old man sex, as if the problem is that they're old rather than they're getting off on being close to a naked young woman who's unconscious. There are entirely too many user reviewers who mistake the performance of Emily Browning, where she comes across as distant from many, perhaps most, things that she experiences as bad acting, when I would argue it's quite clear that this is exactly what was written on the page, how she was directed. You know, note that a number of the performances, arguably most, are consistent. They feel as if they belong in the same world. They're not necessarily natural or charismatic. That means that the director asked them to do this. Whether or not that was the right choice is a matter of debate, but it's hard to argue that the performance is due to Browning's talent. You don't have to watch her very much to appreciate the, the depth of her talent. You know, the, this was the, the same year that she also appeared in the, I can't remember, I'm blanking on the name, uh, Sucker Punch. Two years after The Uninvited and seven years after a series of unfortunate events. Oh, that's right, that is her in Ghost Ship, isn't it? I, I very vaguely recall. I know who she's playing, I just, I didn't really remember. Yeah, she's, she's good in that. I, I'm not sure I would necessarily say that one was as much a showcase of her talents as the others I mentioned. She does also appear in Pompeii, and yeah, she's fine. Um, you know, it's a Paul W. S. Anderson movie. He casts a lot of people who are super talented, and he doesn't really know how to use their talents to, to good effect. But yeah, um, something you see across, so, so once again, a series of unfortunate events, The Uninvited, Sucker Punch, and this movie, Emily Browning plays these characters who they're somewhat I know I feel like the word detached is going too far but they they're slightly removed from the the situations around them you know and in some of these movies it's because of severe trauma in this movie there's there's hints but I'm not sure I would really say that we get a complete concrete answer, which I can appreciate some feel that's an issue. I think the movie gives us enough, personally. But yeah, um, I know some people would say, oh, she must not have a lot of range. I don't think that every actor, I, I haven't watched enough of her movies. She's she's been, let's see, she has 33 credits total. You know, I've watched what, five, six, something like that, you know. Hypothetically, if this is the extent of her range, I don't think that means that she's a bad actor. You know, there's plenty of actors who just, yeah, there are certain roles, certain types of roles, where they're clearly most at home. And, yeah. Um, yeah, she's incredibly talented, and the performance is exactly right for this. It would feel incredibly awkward if she was like this bubbly, you know, constantly smiling, really cheerful person with, you know, when, when the, the camera work and editing are this kind of you know, the, the, let's see, yeah, um, to, yeah, something I saw various critics say, you know, the, the movie in general, and this is in part through the, the cinematography and editing, slow, sterile, and cold, and, and yeah, you know, you look at some of the lines she's delivering, yeah, obviously she has to be saying there, there are some of the lines where you could have seen oh this the, the wording there could have been more passion here but that's the point that she's saying something where you would you know if you just read it on the page and you don't see any like stage direction and yeah anything like that you're gonna assume oh this is like a moment of passion and then you you know 
yeah, that would not be consistent with the rest of the characterization, and it is very purposeful, you know, and, and the fact that she says these things, like, there are scenes in this movie, and some of them very early on, so I'm not spoiling anything, where, like, she's very heavily sexually objectified by men, and basically just, you know, she, she seems almost resigned to it, like, she'll maybe, you know, be, be just slightly defiant, but not to the level, like, she's, I guess that's a spoiler, I'll get to it later in the video, but the, yeah, you know, she just, it seems like she doesn't really feel particularly invested here, and, yeah, it's just, it's, it's clearly purposeful, you know, let's, let's try to analyze why it is instead of saying, oh, you know, I guess she's not very good. Some user reviews say, specifically say that, you know, the, let's see, um, I need to proofread my notes better, uh, yes, here we go. Some user reviewers specifically say, you know, oh, you know, some people think it was brave of Emily Browning to do this role where she's naked for so much of it. You know, oh, they wouldn't be saying it if she was not conventionally attractive, suggesting that the reviewers who say it was brave of her are just gawking at her and trying to intellectualize, which I sincerely hope is not the case. But... Honestly, this user reader probably is just hoping that others are just like him, that probably a him, and they themselves would not want, want to watch a conventionally unattractive woman naked. Obviously, it will also be brave, probably more so if she were conventionally unattractive. The reason it's referred to as brave is because of all the misogyny that, you know, it will... Yeah, all the all the misogynists who hate all women, the the ones who are sexual, the ones who sexualize themselves or who are sexualized against their will, not acknowledging that it was against their will, and the ones who are never sexualized, you know, the the yeah, se sexualizing yourself on camera as a woman is accepting the intense scrutiny of misogynists. For a very long time, women who shed their clothes on camera struggled to be taken seriously and were seen as nothing more than sex objects. It severely diminished their job offers. Any movie that sexualizes a woman takes away the agency of the character. Note how often such a character is passive and the anger misogynists express whenever one isn't. And often the actress also lost a lot of power. Now, let's see. And yeah, I, I think an argument could be made that an entire movie should not be this male gazy. Some user reviewers criticize how little music there is. I agree that it is off putting, but like so many other things in this that have that impact, it's entirely purposeful. We are not told through the music how to feel about the voyeurism. It doesn't color our perception. The kind of the camera kind of keeps us at arm's length. You know, if if the movie was explicitly trying to say to the audience, look how, you know, incredibly sexy the situation is, the camera would be panning across her body, it would show parts of her body, like, separate from the, the whole, you know, the, 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 yeah, um, in, the 2016 Suicide Squad movie, there's this bit where Harley Quinn is, like, seen, you know, putting on some clothes, and the camera, like, specifically pans across her, you know, not in an objective or neutral way, but in a way that's supposed to, like, you know, because at that point, basically, if you are looking at the screen, you are staring at a woman's body, you know, hypothetically, you could choose to look away from the screen, but that's disengaging from the movie, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, the camera and the editing of a movie tells us what we're supposed to be looking at, and the kind of, 
yeah, the way this this camera, let's see, I took a particular note for, yeah, a lot of the shots are wide shots or medium shots, you know, and a lot of the, the time it's in locations that are either completely empty or largely, and if they're, you know, there, there are parts where there's a bunch of people there, but the camera kind of makes it feel like, you know, you're alone in a crowd, kind of. The, the You know, it's clear that we're only meant to, to focus on Lucy and maybe one other person. It's Occasionally it's more than one person that she's dealing with at the time. You know, and yeah, this this has a, a distinct impact. You know, she's she's a young woman living in a city. Presumably, there's countless places she could go if she wanted to be with other people. And even when she goes to those uh, the places, which does not happen very often, according to the film, according to what was shown, she doesn't really seem to. Yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't socialize in a, a healthy way and see and yeah some of what the rich men do doesn't even have anything to do with sex it might be physical but the only way it could possibly be sexual is if they get off on just exerting power humiliating young women and that is of course the case some take issue with the fact that it's titled Sleeping Beauty. Like, I appreciate being frustrated if you thought this was indeed a retelling of the fairy tale. And and certainly, you know, this was around the time when there were, you know, th yeah, to be clear, it's absolutely not. This is not supposed to be the the fairy tale, not even like a, a modern, postmodern reinterpretation or something. You know, part of the, the title, it's because there are these books that help um what's the word the the there there are these two specific books that helped inspire the movie i'm going to find the titles real quick kind of thought i copied them in already but apparently i didn't um yeah the one of the the books is called memories of my melancholy and then a word i really don't like saying um Starts with a W. Maybe from context you have it. It's if you really badly want to, you know, it's it's very close to the top of the Wikipedia page for the movie. And the other novel is called The House of the Sleeping Beauties. And yeah, that is where the the title comes from. You know, yeah, this was a time when we were get you know, there were there were you know the yeah, in 2012, we had two interpretations of Snow White. You know, one with uh, Kirsten Dunst. Kristen Stewart. Wow. I, I swear I got enough sleep last night. Obviously, I know. I can tell those two actresses apart. Um, and the other, I want to say her name is Lily Collins. I'm going to find it real quick. Uh, oh, that's right. It's that one's not called Snow White. It's called Mirror Mirror. Um, Lily Collins, yes. And uh, you know, they're the the um, yeah Hansel and Gretel witch hunters. Jeremy Renner and Gemma Arterton came out in 2013. You know, so yeah, this was a time. And I'm I've heard that there's also there were also some TV shows, but I I haven't really watched any of those. You know, but but yeah. Given the title, given the timing, one could imagine that might be what it is. But again, you know, the IMDb summary makes it quite clear that that's not what it is. You know, it. Yeah. Um, I believe the the reason for the titling, the point as far as I can tell, is to bring attention to the fact that one of the most beloved fairy tales here in the West focuses in part of on the beauty of a woman who is so passive she's literally in a coma for a chunk of it. And everything works out in part because of her passivity. It motivates the prince. That is quite messed up. And yeah, you know, the, the that kind of passivity 
is also celebrated by characters here, and an argument could be made that the movie itself is doing so. You know, and, and again, it is, you know, let's keep in mind, you know, part of what misogynists like about, you know, Emily Browning is not a very, you know, she's, she's a fairly, you know, short, small, you know, little, you know, figure. And I'm allowed to say that because I am, yeah, I'm, I'm not very much taller than she is. You know, the, the, and, and, yeah, some misogynists like being physically bigger than the, the woman they're with, and let's be honest, for some of them, it's that they like being able to physically dominate her, you know, and the, yeah, and so, the, to be clear, the following is not saying there's something wrong with Emily Browning or anyone else today who is, you know, who has fairly, you know, somewhat pale skin, but, again, you know, some fairy tales celebrate how, how white the, the skin was. Back when these fairy tales were written, you know, part of that was that it was seen as, you know, if you're very, very high class, if you're royalty, your skin is very pale, because you never get out and you never go out and get any sun back then you know oh sun that's for poor people that's for working people you know and part of it is also all of the incest which royal families engaged in because they would rather engage in incest than you know procreate with a poor person and yes, I acknowledge, you know, back then, if you were poor, there was some chance that you, you know, because of hygiene, you know, they weren't really able to, to you know, yeah, have, engage in the kind of hygiene that we know today is healthy. That's, you know, yeah, they, they might have some, they might be carrying something. And the... The rich people didn't want, you know, but incest is, is you know, not exactly of a good alternative. <sighs> One user reviewer gets really creepy with how much he talks about the appearance of Emily Browning, really objectifying her, talking about her like you might talk about a painting in brush strokes, like her appearance is a work of art. It's not wrong to talk about what women bring to movies, but focus on what they do, not just what they look like. And, yeah, so among the, the things that people criticize, some say it's too art house. And, let's see. Yeah, I already mentioned we don't know an awful lot about Lucy herself. She's not the only one. And, yeah, some say there's not enough story or plot. And, yes, right, I'm supposed to be addressing these. Uh, whether or not it's too art house does very much come down to preference. I mean, if the movie was 30 minutes longer, I, and, and, it, and those 30 minutes were at the same pace, I would probably be saying this is excessive. Um, I don't think it's boring. I think it's entirely too fascinating to be boring. You know, an argument could be made that it's misogynistic, but I definitely don't think it's boring. You know, internalized misogyny is a thing. The fact that it was written and directed by a woman does not mean that it's impossible for it to be misogynistic. Um, whether there's enough story or plot, I definitely will say this is, again, one of those things where I think this might have been a better, like... I think 40 minutes might have been too little, but 50 minutes would probably have been a good, you know, I, I, I'm not sure that I would say that it needed to, you know, and I don't, I don't like saying that about, you know, movies made by minorities. I, I'm not saying that there should be like, what's the word? Um, 
you know, I I am aware that there is a a very ugly history of of men telling minorities not to, you know, yeah, that that we shouldn't have to listen to them or or watch their you know engage with their art and such. I I. I do think that you know the the Goldilocks zone is is, yeah, slightly less running time, and I have to wonder if this is one of those cases where, you know, sadly right now, you know I th I think the technical definition feature of of a feature film is just anything above forty five minutes, but there's a lot of people who don't perceive that as a feature film. They see that as a short film. And short films don't have the same kind, they, they don't get the same kind of attention that feature films do. I think this might have been, a, you know, it was made into a feature specifically in order to, to get it more attention. And it might have, yeah, um, made my point. Moving on. It, it definitely is a movie where there's not a lot of story or plot. I don't think that every movie needs to have a lot of that. Uh, you know, like, I would agree if, like, if a lot of the scenes were much longer and didn't get to a new point, but, like, when you look at the scenes, they're clearly expressing, you know, we, we do get a sense of who Lucy is. She's not 100% passive all of the time. You know, sometimes she is a, she is even defiant towards people who have some power over her. You know, and and we're meant to engage with that. We're meant to think about why is that? Why, you know, it's a movie where sometimes she's very passive, sometimes she's very defiant. She doesn't seem happy very much of the time. You know, and and that's probably why. You know, the passivity is probably in part just the expectation for women perhaps especially young women to be you know, there's maybe a little bit more if you know once a woman is married maybe has children there's you know then people are like well you know she's contributing but young women unwed young women who don't yet have children yeah like a lot of people really don't want to to hear from them or to to see them at all you know, I, I imagine that's where the passivity comes from. The defiance is in part a response to that. You know, she doesn't want to be completely ignored. And in part because she doesn't really feel very fulfilled from her life. Um, yeah, some people have said it's not as good as Eyes Wide Shut, shut even though it feels Kubrickian. I... Oof, that... Definitely, I, I can't really argue with that. And again, I, I really don't mean to be saying this man is better than this woman. You know, I think there's a lot of filmmakers, you know, as I already, I, yeah, earlier I referenced Patty Jenkins, and I can't believe I'm blanking on her name. I, I swear it's not disrespect, it's ADHD. And yes, I do actually have that diagnosis. Um, the Nightingale was directed by. Jennifer Kent, you know, incredibly talented writer-directors, Patty Jenkins and, and Jennifer Kent. You know, it, it might, yeah, o overall, you know, Eyes Wide Shut is somewhat, you know, yeah, ov overall. Um, you know, Kubrick is, a, is an extremely high bar. Yeah, some have noted a David Lynch inspiration, which is also very true. And I do want to say, you know, yeah, you can see some Kubrick, you can see some David Lynch. I wasn't sitting there thinking, oh, wow, this is, just, why didn't she just hand them the script? You know, well, you know, Kubrick is dead, so that might be why he didn't get it. But, you know, could David Lynch has, have directed this? Hypothetically, I don't think that the material is 100. I think that there's enough of her own fingerprints on it, then, you know, yeah. And, let's see. 
yeah, uh, others have pointed out the cinematography is amazing. And yeah, uh, one person noted that the movie explores how today's sex is unemotional and not done out of love. And that is very true. And I think that is part of what it's trying to get at. And yeah, um, some have said, you know, oh, it feels like it was made by a French director. And that's also very true. And yeah, the camera will sometimes linger, not move very much. And there are relatively few cuts except to signal a scene is over. It's time for the new one. And yeah, the movie's about apathy, and whether it's boring or gripping really depends on the viewer. One person said it's like art, with certain scenes belonging in a museum, which is very much true. Uh, at least one person said there's too much fade to black. I wish I could disagree, but yeah, I, I don't think it kept having as strong of an effect as it did early on. We sincerely do not need more than one review of the sort that just uses a bunch of words to express nothing other than that the user reviewer did not like the movie. Like, some approach it the way the nostalgia critic at least used to. I have no idea if he's improved. I stopped watching years ago. Where basically it's just about saying a lot of negative things, some specific, some vague. It's not about engaging with it. It's not even necessarily about explaining what's wrong or how it could be improved. If the only thing you want to express about a piece of media is that you didn't like it, not why, then just give it a negative rating. Don't leave a user review that says nothing. Don't be part of sucking up the oxygen. I do recommend you read reviews from critics and users on Rotten Tomato, Metacritic, and IMDb. Not all of them are equally good, as I've just gone over, but there definitely are some things. I think that might be about... Um, yeah, the opening of the movie really gives you a, a good sense of what you're in for. You know, some people will probably turn this off within five minutes or less. I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits with what came before, and I definitely think the ending is interesting. And I would have liked to to read or listen to uh, audiobook versions of the two books that inspired this, but I was not able to get my hands on copies so I cannot make any comparisons. Let's see. I appreciate that, you know, for for the negative things you can say about the movie, I would definitely say the most interesting character is probably Clara, a female character played by Rachel Blake. There's this like on the one hand, she is the one you know it's it's she she hires these young women and you know instructs them and such so you know she is ah, what's the word she's she's partly uh to blame for what's happening but she's also she says things that show a you know, she does feel some concern. You know, she specifies, don't think of this as a career. You know, and... I mean, you, you wouldn't think that would be something that someone would say if they're trying to exploit someone. You, you wouldn't give them... Because that is good advice. You know, it is actually a... Yeah, you know, that's that's one of the things that some young women struggle with. Once they enter this world, they struggle to get back out of it, you know. And and she says this fairly early on. She doesn't wait until, oh, it's too late, so I might as well say, you know, makes me feel better. No, she she legitimately, yeah, there's, there's something, there's more going on there, and I, I really appreciate that. Um, that might be... I 
don't have much else to say about the cast. Like, everyone does really well. No, no one felt like they didn't quite know how, which, again, tells me Julia Lee knows how to communicate to actors because these performances are not... Yeah. They, they contain things that a lot of acting teachers would say, you can't ever do this, you know. The, there is this, like, I've, I mentioned that Lucy seems disengaged. Everyone kind of seems disengaged. No, no one in this movie is that happy, or at least not for very long at a time. You know, it, it is a, a snapshot of a world and you can make a case of whether, you know, is it just the specific world where these elderly men pay to, for, for access to, you know, partially or fully naked young women, or is it just city life in 2011 in the West, you know? A world where people aren't really, you know, that's, that's another thing. If this was made today, there would definitely be social media. Um, yeah. I don't think that's a problem for the movie, to be clear. But yeah, um, it it is very much about like it 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 feels like like if you if you took out certain scenes, it would feel like there's almost no one left living in this world. Like, did did the apocalypse happen? Is is this a sort of soft post-apocalypse? You know, there's not that many people. N not. Almost none of them seem to be particularly happy, particularly hopeful for the future. Again, several of the main characters, our protagonist and several of, of the, the characters in our periphery are young, you know, 20s or 30s, and they don't seem like they're thinking about, you know, oh, this is the best, you know, I'm, I'm finally out of high school, I can, you know, I can make my own choices, you know, she's in, she's... In college, university, you know, the you this could easily have been a much more happy movie. And the fact that it's not is clearly intentional. And I do think that the the fact that all the performances really match that. Because it really the, the movie would start to it's one of those things where the foundation has to be completely firm. You know, there's a number of movies that can sustain minor problems, you know, and, and you'll see reviews and you'll see, oh, you know, it's amazing. You gotta kind of go along with this one thing. It's kind of, okay. But the rest of it is amazing. This movie, if there was one weak link in the acting, that would just, like, you wouldn't be able to, because you're no longer immersed in the world, because this is not, like... I can't speak for everyone, but I've never felt like I was stuck in in muck the way that the characters, uh, you know, not figuratively, but when it comes to like, yeah, that there there isn't really hope expressed, you know. It's a um, yeah. Uh, so the the. Um, the um yeah you know it transports us to this this very specific world and yeah keeps us there for the for the duration the the dialogue is also very carefully written and delivered all 13 entries in the imdb quote section are worth looking up at least after watching and I think that might be right. I also wanted to to clarify. You know, there is this. Some some people think that it is easier to make a movie that has long takes and without a lot of camera camera movement and such compared to one that has a lot of camera movement. Uh, you know, a, a greater variety of ang ankle angles. Wow. Swear I got enough sleep last night. Yes, um, 
you know, as mentioned, a lot of the shots in this are wide or medium shots. There's not an awful lot of like close up, and sometimes that's because it allows for a little more, a, a little bit more movement in the frame. And usually, if the camera moves, it's like a tracking shot. If if you know a person is walking from place to place, or sometimes it's you know, once the players have moved into position, the camera will go a little closer to the the one we're meant to to focus on. But no, it is not easier. Um, the long takes means that people have to memorize all of the the dialogue and be able to deliver it, you know, in a in a way that fits the performance. It means a lot or a lot of planning. You know, sometimes you'll see on movies that don't have a huge amount of money, they'll cut a little bit more so they don't have to plan as carefully. You know, this is something you, for example, see in the El Mariachi, you know, Robert Rodriguez, El Mariachi from 1991. You know, but, but yeah, here, the, yeah, um, it wasn't easier, it was a deliberate choice. And, you know, I can't rule out that maybe it, it was partially a budget thing, but it, did, it doesn't feel like it's, like, limiting the movie the way that uh, lower budget sometimes can. This was shot in Australia, um, some of it in Sydney, possibly all of it in Sydney, and the... Um, yeah, it, it gets good um, authenticity out of this compared to if they had used sets. And see, I think that might be about... Yeah, so in total, this movie is... There we go. Uh, 94 minutes if you don't count end credits, and 98 if you do count them. And there isn't anything during the, the end credits. You don't have to sit through them. And, yeah, um, I already mentioned some people will make their decision in the first five minutes. Uh, for others, it might take... I, I would say if... 40 minutes in, if you're still not, if the movie just is not working for you, this probably just is not your kind of movie. So, the best element is probably that it definitely does have something it is trying to say. I don't know if it, if it makes all the right choices. But I, I, there's no doubt. You know, I've seen, I've seen some say, oh, it feels a bit like, is it, you know, it's, it's like, softcore porn, you know, but, but like directed by someone who doesn't really, who, you know, yeah, who isn't really into it or something. I understand where they're coming from, and for sure some of the angles and and some of the stuff were shown feels like that but it definitely is trying to comment on misogyny and objectification and overall the the worst aspect and whether or not this is a big deal i think is up for debate but i would definitely yeah the the fact that at the end of the day, like, there's almost definitely misogynists who, you know, like, they might fast forward through some parts, but other than that, yeah, you know, that, like, they, they like that the camera shows so much of Emily Browning and, you know, both in how much skin is bare and the fact that the camera, like, there's, there's a number of shots where you can see her entire body in just one shot. And, yeah, you know, if you're just looking for jerk-off material, you know, those people, I'm sure, just look at the part of her that they want to and, and focus on that, you know. Let's see. You know, I've, I mentioned earlier, you know, Monster and the Nightingale. 
I I doubt that there's as many people you know using those for you know as as there are for this and let's see yeah um others often call it the movie boring yeah the thing I was most worried about before watching was definitely that it would be exploitative and yeah ultimately there's definitely that element to it I, I yeah the thing I was most looking forward to was the artistry and that definitely you know there's a lot of, of really great I kind of wish something that I saw that I really appreciated I think that the shots where you could see there's there's this one part where the let's see yeah it ha it happens quite early Lucy goes home to and and one of her roommates like you know they they hear the door and they're like okay that's definitely Lucy and you see their face like oh no not this and then when Lucy gets close enough that she can see the the roommate and they you know then the roommate like puts on a smile so you know that tells us you know the the um, deep down they're frustrated with Lucy but they're trying to to hide it you know I I thought that worked well I I would have liked to see more of that and there's this one bit where like Lucy I don't want to give too much away but just there's there's a shot where I guess actually, yeah the the couple of times where I'm not sure I'm yes okay starting over there are times in this where Lucy is alone in a crowd I thought those really worked I suppose I'm not really saying that I thought there should be more because then we might end up with with too much and really the overwhelming sensation is she's not alone in the crowd she's just alone you know there's not very many people who particularly want to be around her which again necessitates the the distant performance because if she was bubbly it would be like why is she why why doesn't anyone want to be around her she seems like a fun person but you know yeah like you see her in this movie and you don't really find your this is not someone that you want to necessarily socialize with in real life like we don't right and and I saw at least one person say, oh, you know, maybe she deserves the, the bad stuff that happens, which, fuck you very much, no, she doesn't. But the, um, yeah, you know, she's, she's someone, like, you watch it and you, and you f wish that she could get help because she, there's clearly, you know, she needs help, basically. But yeah, people don't really want to be, there's, there's fairly few people who seem to legitimately want to be around her like certainly there are men who want to fuck her but there are not that many people men or women in her life that genuinely enjoy being around her you know she is lonely and the movie yeah I, I thought the movie did a, a good job and that's also where you know I, I wouldn't want this to only be 40 minutes because then it couldn't properly get across just how lonely she is we see her in a bunch of different locations she's almost always alone she's always lonely you know she she does she's she's paid to do some medical experiments lonely she like cleans up this this bar lonely roommates lonely out at you know in in a you know, yeah, at a bar late at night, alone in a crowd, you know, just, <clears throat> yeah, I have made my point, and I'm going to move on. Yeah, this is definitely, you know, this is a movie that might ruin your day. Do not watch it if you're looking for something to, to cheer you up, which, again, you know, if you, if you pick this up thinking, oh, it's like a live-action version of the animated Disney one, you are gonna be disappointed. 
there was one person who legit just left a negative review saying, I thought this was going to be, instead of just being like, you know what, my bad, I should have looked harder, and not posting that on the internet for everyone to see. And yeah, uh, the trailer does give at least a little bit too much away. The trailer has this very heavy, oppressive tone. It kind of implies more danger and more hidden, sinister element than the film contains. I will say, I don't know how you make a trailer for this movie that doesn't sell it as being something else whilst making it appealing. This this is one of those movies where just it's probably not really doable to, to make a... Yeah. And, you know, which is not a bad thing for the, the movie. Um, yeah, the cover and poster don't give too much away. It is slightly interesting. Um, the, the, the cover and poster, there's, yeah, there's two different ones on IMDb. And both of them have this sort of there's a balance between the the conventional attractiveness of Emily Browning and this sense of she almost has more agency on the posters and cover than in the movie like the the two variants one of them is just her face and you know right right in both of them she's basically looking at us looking at the camera and the other is her you know um, she's sitting on on a bed with her back turned and you know we don't see anything but she does appear to be naked it gets across this thing of you know should we be looking at her you know the the I, I remember the, in, in at least one video on the female gaze, the, the take, excellent YouTuber, pointed out that the female gaze very frequently has the, the character looking back at the person looking, you know, underlining the agency of the character, underlining we're not just meant to, to stare at them, which very frequently the male gaze, the male gaze almost kind of predatory, like you know, staring and and trying to see. Okay, is this, you know, trying to trying to like plan how how do I best like the, the that you know horrible book. I think it was called The Game, not the not the one that was turned into a David Fincher movie, but the one that I want to say it was the one that introduced the care the concept. Wow, concept of nagging. You know, but but yeah, um, these two posters are very, you know, they kind of go between male gaze and female gaze, and yeah, and you know, as you look at her her face on the the poster, her eyes, you know, yeah, you get this thing of how she's kind of disengaged. Yeah, I think the fact that this doesn't feature her sleeping or otherwise unaware that she's being watched, I think is significant, and I think it was the right choice. And, let's see, yeah. So, on Rotten Tomatoes, this has a 48% uh, from, let's see, it's, it, yeah, 98 reviews, uh, 47 fresh, 5.40, out of 10 is the average score, and the audience gave it a 32% based on more than 50,000 ratings. A 2.7 out of 5 is the average rating. So yeah, this is another one of those rare cases where I go back and watch a movie that isn't current, but is actually rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. And let's see. Yeah, uh, so the consensus Sleeping Beauty's provocative premise and luminous art design is hampered by a clinical remote presentation, delivering boredom and shock in equal measure. And let's see. Yeah, I, I can't really disagree with the, you know, I just, I think it's purposeful, but I get why, you know, it isn't. It isn't what a lot of people wanted. 
and let's see. Yes, so on Metacritic, it has a 61 out of 100 for critics. And let's see, critics, uh, yes, generally favorable. Um, of the 20 reviews, 12 are positive, 6 are mixed, only 2 are negative, and users gave it a 4.8 out of 10. 64 ratings and 9 user reviews and let's see um yeah so one of the negative user reviews on there is you know yeah points out you know the word pretentious is thrown out thrown around too easily, but they do think this is pretentious. And yeah, one person says it's a bleak and disturbing movie. Yeah, I, I mean that's the point. Um, let's see. And I think I think that might be, yeah, one, one of the negative user reviews on Metacritic says the, the, you know, there are so many better films exploring sex. And I, you know, I do think that, you know, if I was going to, if, if, if someone asked me, you know, great movie from, you know, around, you know, from the early 2010s that explores female sexuality and is just a really solid movie. Yeah, I'd probably go with Black Swan over this. Let's see. But then, you know, Black Swan does not really talk about... It, it does talk about objectification. I'm not sh it it doesn't explore the male gaze the way this does. Let's see. That's also like I think you know t talking about the male gaze is important. I think YouTube video essays which I realize, you know, in 2011 that wasn't so much of a thing. Maybe that's why you know it <laughs> hasn't been remade yet now. Um I, th I think, you know, yeah, I spent, you know, 94 minutes watching this. I've probably spent more than that watching, for example, The Take, talk about male gaze and such. Yeah, I, I this is probably a subject that's better explored in, you know, the, the in that format. You know, not, not everything is equally great to, you know, for, for exploring in a, in a movie. Now, there are 139 IMDb reviews, or 81, if you don't count spoilers. And I forgot to write down, let's see, I th okay, this guy, this appears to be of the 81. So, of the, you know, yes, I, I read, I certainly read those 81. Yeah, I don't think I read the rest of them. But yeah, um, so, of those 81... 17 gave it a 1 out of 10, 6 gave it a 2, 12 gave it a 3, 4 gave it a 4, 10 gave it a 5, 9 gave it a 6, 5 gave it a 7, 4 gave it an 8, 7 gave it a 9, and only 3 gave it a 10. So yeah, you know, fairly negatively received. And I do think this is one of those cases where it's not just that you know, oh, it's it's people who just don't want to engage in it or who don't like being told, you know, maybe, you know, some, some movies that are critical of us cis straight men, you know, yeah, some of them get negative ratings and it appears to be, oh, you know, there's just some of us who can't handle that. I, I try to be open to it, but I... Yeah, I'm not sure that was the case here. I think a lot of the people who who didn't like it are 
yeah, there's there's better reasons. There's good reasons. Uh, yeah, it has a 5.3 out of 10 based on 35,000 user ratings on IMDb. 19.7% gave it 6, 18.8 gave it 5, 14, uh, yeah, 14.1 gave it 7, 12.0 gave it 4, 7.7 .7 gave it 3, 7.4 gave it 1, 7.3 gave it 8, 5.3 gave it 2, 4.8 gave it 10, 2.9 gave it 9. And let's see, the... That is about, yeah, um, ultimately my rating is a 7 out of 10, and let's see, and, and yeah, I, I think I've already said, but it, it bears repeating, I do think that I, I would be interested in, you know, if, if if Julia Lee puts a movie in theaters, I might watch it in theaters. I, I did think this was quite interesting. Let's see. And, like, you know, an argument could be made that it was a failed experiment, but at least it's an experiment. And a lot of the way it, it gets it right. Now, that is it for the entire review. This is when I get into spoilers. So, yeah, from here on out, I'm going to spoil the entire movie. Starting with notes taken while watching. So, real quick about the, the ending. I saw one user review say they didn't think the primal scream Emily Browning lets out works because she keeps going after her voice cracks. I think it's the exact other way around. The fact that she does keep going shows the depth of her pain, and the fact that it doesn't take long for her voice to crack suggests to me she hasn't released a scream, let alone an intense one, in an extremely long time. Like It's like a muscle. If you don't use it, it weakens. I think it's very powerful. You know, Sadly, some people are just looking for things to hate about this movie. Now, let's see. I don't really have anything to say about the medical experiments that, um, I can't believe I'm playing her name again, Mary Ann Johansson didn't in her written review. I'm linking that, you know, it's a flick philosopher. Please read that <clears throat> instead of me just restating. And, let's see, yeah, um, the, the... You know, she does a, a line of, of coke with, uh, you know, this this other woman, and then these two men are talking about, you know, we're trying to figure out who, you know, who to fuck you. And, yeah, you know, she just says, you know, toss a coin, you know, and once, one, you know, yeah, once it's been decided who is going to fuck her, then she says, you know, oh, but is it tonight or is it a year from now? Or four years from now, something like that. You know, okay, flip a coin. Is it now or is it five hours from now? You know, there's there's these little, like, I suppose those are not necessarily defiant, but, you know, she, there's this tiny little bit. You know, she's not completely silent. And let's see... Yeah, and I already mentioned in the review the thing with the roommate, you know, the the face. Is that... I I haven't actually watched, but that looks distinctly like... Um, see, I don't even know what she's... It, yeah, yeah, Sarah Snook, f who's, who's, you know... Wow, it's not even one of the four she's known from. Okay, IMDB, that's a choice. Um, but yeah, she's Shiv from Succession. I hear great things. She, I've I've seen her face a million times in in video essays about Succession. Um, yeah, it was it was interesting seeing her here, and she you know she doesn't appear very much in this. Um, let's see, yeah, and you know 
yeah, there's the, it's, it's her house, it's not her house, it's her parents' house. And then she says something like, being born is not an achievement or something, which like, yeah, comrade Lucy. But then, you know, I suppose she's not necessarily saying nobody should be a landlord, she's just saying you're not the landlord, so, you know, could go further, would like it if she went further, you know. And then you have the thing about, you know, the, the, it's your, it's your turn to clean the bathroom, we agreed. And she says, I did it. And he says, you have to grout. You know, so we have this thing of how, like, people ask things of her. And sometimes she pushes back, sometimes she gives in. And even when she does try to, to do these things, they're still, like, not good enough, you know. Let's see. And, and yeah, you know, basically... In the entire movie, all she seems to do is labor and pleasure-seeking, and she seems indifferent to both. Like, she never seems to experience be I mean, pleasure for very long at a time. It, we, we see more of her, like, maybe not quite hungover, but, like, afterwards, you know. And, let's see. And, and you know, others have pointed out Despite her having all these odd jobs, she never seems like she quite has enough money. And, you know, there's a theory that maybe she's wasting money. You know, maybe she's spending too much on, on drinking or maybe she gambles and we just don't see it or something. I don't know if it's maybe supposed to be that even if she doesn't... Like, there is this one time where she burns a, a one bill. But other than that, I'm just not sure I necessarily see the a lot of evidence that she's like wasting the money so much as it it seems more to me like it's saying it's almost impossible to make enough money you know as a, a young person you know they they do make mention of of you know what was this like stu student loans or something like that which I actually don't let's see are student loans in Australia is that also a problem um, let's see, yeah, it seems like it's also, it's, it's bad in Australia, like it also is in, for example, America, so, yeah, it, it seems like it's saying, you know, if you are a young woman, and you're trying to get an education, you know, it's almost impossible to make enough money to, and, let's see, Yeah, and, and, you know, at work, you know, she's the, yeah, her mother calls and, you know, her boss comes in and clearly displeased with this development. And, you know, just immediately Lucy asks, how did you even get this number, you know? And, yeah, you know, her mom asks for money, which is another reason why she doesn't have enough. And we see, you know, she, she says, yes, I have the card in front of me, and we, I, I really appreciate that it's made clear, you know, no, she absolutely doesn't, like, because the, the, you know, if, for example, there's, there's some art movies that would have had the camera purely on the boss's face, and focusing on her displeasure for it, and it would be like, well, did she, you know, we'd probably assume, oh, I guess she did have the card on her, but no, you know, the fact that she, she has memorized it because she knows it's just a matter of time before her mom calls, Maybe even calling her work, which is very unprofessional. It makes her look bad, you know. You're supposed to keep stuff like that away from your job. Uh, you know, but, yeah. And she doesn't even put up a fight or argue or anything. And also the detail that the call is not at all private, you know. And she doesn't even ask the boss to, you know. Like, now, technically, her boss, if she wanted to, she, she heard every number. If she memorized that she could take advantage of her, her card. I'm not saying she would, but that's the kind of thing where, okay, th maybe this is a private conversation. Let's see. And yeah, she goes to Birdman, a character that several user reviewers were very, very confused by. Uh, I agree that we don't know quite, we don't know a lot, but, you know, yeah, they're like, they're friends. You know, he... 
he doesn't seem to leave his house ever. He he's basically just always there and and doing drugs. You know, I th I think it's the last time. Is it one of the times that she shows up? He asks, "What time is?" It? You know, like you got windows. You're he's, you know that that kind of suggests he. Yeah, he he never leaves his house to to not. Yeah, um, but but yeah, you know the, there's this, they they play act. You know this. How are you? Very well, and the children very well. Let's see, and yeah, um, then we see the yeah uh, when when she's going to to the the mansion she waits you know there's this thing i what what are those called uh anyway you got to like slip in a, a coin and you know the and then you can move through the the thing and you know she stands there for for several seconds and then a skater comes up and she stands real close to him to to get you know so that she gets passed on his you know without having to spend any of her own money and you know she says thank you and he says you're welcome you know there's no like he's not like you should pay for that you know there's no just yeah and you know maybe maybe he the the fact that a, a young woman he doesn't know was that physically close to him maybe that's enough for him maybe he feels like well that was, you know that was not very expensive for what i got out of it or something and I do quite like the reveal of the the CCTV camera. You know, she's she's sitting and, and waiting, and she's offered something to to drink. And yeah, we we see that it's uh, what's the word? Um, yeah, there's a on the on the table. There's a, a laptop that shows the. Yeah, the girl outside, and then she closes it before Lucy comes in to avoid Lucy realizing that she was being watched like that. And let's see. Yeah, and and so they they have her take off her, you know, strip down to underwear and really objectify her. You know, she. Like the the guy says, "What is this?" Like she's, you know, like he caught her embezzling or something, and and she's like, "I had a mole removed." You know, it, and it's such a. Can I just say, fuck those people, fuck them to hell. People have moles. Some people choose to have moles removed. Some people leave them on. None of your fucking business. Just like. Sometimes I wonder if maybe, like, if someone is that shallow, should we maybe just, like, write, you know, tattoo it across their forehead to warn the rest of us to not have anything to do with people who just, it's none of your fucking business. And let's see, then. Um, yeah, and she has to learn the, the rules of, of service. And you know she, yeah, she she might have been lying. She said, you know, she's at, you know, I think it's Clara asked, you know, do you have experience with service? Yes, and you know, fucks up the very first, you know, gets the very first question wrong. So so yeah, um, that was definitely, yeah, and you know, she also claimed she doesn't do drugs, and by this. I think by this point we've already seen no she like she did a line of coke in a in a bathroom you know this but yeah and and Clara actually says oh we should do drugs drugs are a grace or a gift from god something like that and yeah we see the hair be removed and i appreciate like the woman does have at least a little bit of empathy for her but it is also this very business like you know What's the word? Like, she doesn't... There is this sense that, you know, we have to do this. You know, you can't proceed if we don't shave. And, you know, yeah, she spends a lot of it, like, screaming in, in pain from it. And at, at one point, she's, like, 
giggling and laughing. I guess it tickles. I, I wouldn't know. And the, yeah. Let's see, and, and then she practices the service thing with, with Birdman, which, yeah. The, the, um, I don't know, that, that felt a little charming to me. And, let's see. Then we get the, the lipstick match bit, which just, wow. But yeah, you know, the, the, the lead person there, the one in charge, you know, yeah, she says, she, you know, okay, that clearly wasn't right. And then she checks without even, like, asking or warning or anything. And then, you know, applies the, the lipstick. So we're again seeing this, you know, there's a little bit of, of defiance. When she isn't apologizing for her existence, she's sometimes defiant. But, you know, not really happy. And we don't, she, she doesn't express deep, you know, yeah. It's it's mostly like sensory and and such, you know. One of the only things where she pushes back against Clara is the the you know your vagina will be a temple. That was you know that is not. But other than that, she goes along with some you know pretty ridiculous things said. And let's see. Then we have the. Um, um, right, the, the, um, yeah, a lot of characters will touch Lucy as if she, as if her body belongs to them, and, yeah, and one of the guys just trips her, like, clearly, purposefully, just to, show that he can just to yeah and you know she apologizes nobody tells him you can't do that and let's see them yeah she lights a bill on fire some some people say it's you know she's just trying to explore you know she's never seen that much money in in one place at the same time you know some some say it shows that she doesn't she's not doing it for money and I, I don't really have anything to to add yeah and and you know one of the the young women say you know it gets easier never easy but easier and you know Lucy asks how long have you been doing this? And the other one says, what kind of a question is that? You know, which, that, yeah, clearly it is something that, that bothers her, you know, the, the other one. Otherwise she would, you know, because that's, it's, you know, when you're co-workers, like, that's, it's a fairly common question. How long have you been working here? Do you like it? That, you know, it's it's small talk, but here it's it's unacceptable. And, you you can understand why it is, but it really underlines Lucy is not really that deep in the world. Like I I feel like Lucy at the end of the movie would not ask, you know, someone. Yeah. Let's see. And yeah, in in the bar she. Yeah, very, very casually offers uh, a stranger a blowjob. And again, you know, the, the, the words she's saying imply passion. But the way she delivers the lines, and, and again, consistent with the character, not criticizing the acting. Yeah, you know, she seems like she's basically in, indifferent. And, yeah, um, back with, yeah, Lucy with, with Birdman, you know, she asks, will you marry me? Yes, thank you, You're, you know, don't mention it. And, you know, yeah, you have this thing of, 
you know, can, yeah, whether or not rehab is an option, which I also, I saw someone suggest that's where the money is going to rehab for Birdman. I'm, I'm not sure I see it, but, you know, I'm not saying mine is the only interpretation. And, and yeah, they do this thing where, you know, he puts on this, like, animal, you know, yeah, of uh, uh, some kind of documentary thing. And he is the one saying stuff, and I don't, I don't know if what he's saying is just like he memorized what is actually being said in the, the thing, but yeah, it's this soft little sort of intimate moment between the two, and you know, basically like they can't, like she's maybe resigned herself to, I can't talk him out of it, you know, he's, he's not going to, to rehab, he's, this is, going to end up killing him and you know she she doesn't want to leave him alone she doesn't want you know but she's also powerless to help she she doesn't cry very much in the movie despite how like sad a lot of it is so the fact that she you know I think both times she cries she cries for him and Yeah, then we get to the part where she starts sleeping, and they give the, yeah. Um, and one of the men breaks the fourth wall. You know, he, like, technically, you know, the, the idea is he's, he's making eye contact with Clara as he's telling her this, but really he's, he's looking directly at the camera, at the audience, and I thought that was a very interesting choice because you can do that. You know, you don't have to have the character look at the camera. You can have them looking off to the side of the camera and will accept, oh, because we already saw the Clara sitting right in front of him. So why is she shouting? He's shouting, whatever. And and yeah, he talks about, you know, the the 30th, you know, he got this book and this, you know, these yeah, these these short stories, and and yeah, you know, basically he's he's using a lot of words, which is unusual for this movie, using a lot of words to basically express I feel frail, you know, I feel so so again, because you know you could have hypothetically, if the only point of this conversation was he wants her assurance that he's safe here which she gives him, you know, without hesitation right after. You know, hypothetically, he could just ask, are you sure this is safe? And she could say yes. You know, but... Yeah, the... the you know, it's... I, I think part of it is maybe the fact that he's... He uses that many words to say that. And he doesn't actually ask, is she okay? Because, I'm sorry... If I walk into a room and there's a, a woman sleeping in a, in a bed that, I, you know, like, I, I mean, I guess Clara probably told him, oh, you know, I gave her a sedative. But it's still just like walking into a room where somebody else is sleeping and then proceeding to get into bed with them is just intensely creepy. And the thing that his, where his head is at is... Am I going to get in trouble for this? You know, not, is this going to, you know, is, is she going to be okay? Like, I, I'm not going to lie. I don't think anything would be able to compel me to get into bed with a sleeping person that didn't, in, in under those sorts of circumstances. Like, okay, sure. You know, if I was still, you know, if, if I was not currently single and I, you know, I got home late and my girlfriend or wife was already sleeping you know, maybe get in bed in those circumstances, but other than that, no, just, and, yeah, I, I do think that it's significant that, you know, clearly he's, he's, you know, he's eloquent, he's intelligent, he understands things, you know, you can't try to say, oh, you know, well, what do you want, you know, he does, he doesn't really understand, he thinks this is okay, no, clearly, he knows it's not okay, but he's not thinking, is this wrong? He's thinking, is someone going to know that I did something wrong? 
and let's see. And I do also think, you know, she specifically says you're safe. No one can see you. And that is, a, I think it's significant that those are the specific words. Because technically, by the end of the movie, it's not that anyone can see the person. You know, it's that there's a camera there. And Clara doesn't know about that. By the end of the movie, I, she doesn't seem to be aware of the camera. But I do think that, yeah, you know, it is meant to... And, and there is perhaps, you know, the fact that no... You know, we we never actually see a a character rewatch what was on the the spy cam, even though it ends with a shot of this. You know, what the spy cam recorded. I I do think that the the fact that you know, yes, the this thing of you know, is a camera neutral? You know, is it anyone? Or is it, you know, a completely passive observer? Which, again, for so much of the movie, the camera is on Lucy and she's partially or fully naked. And, you know, I, I definitely think that the fact that it literally ends with a camera on a camera on Lucy, you know, yeah. Uh, let's see. Inception, you might say. And, yeah, you know, she's told, you know, she, ha she has two weeks to to leave. And, yeah, the the Spanish thing was, was kind of amusing. So, the, the, um, what's the, yeah, um, Let's see. No, I'm not seeing it. Nobody, nobody entered it into the the quotes section. But the, you know, yeah, he's he's like saying, you know, get out of here. So he says, adios, amigo. And she says something like, um, oh, it was maybe something like, chinga tu madre, fuck your mother. So, so yeah, you know, again, a little bit of defiance, and let's see, and and yeah, you know, her the the female flatmate is like, I'm sorry, I'm you know, yeah. Let's see, and yeah, um, she has to find a new place to live, and she you know she finds a brochure, picks it up. Okay, sure, why not? You know, and the guy keeps saying, I sure don't want to see it first. And she says, I know I know someone in the building. You know, she just she wants to get past it. You know, we see that a lot in, in the movie. She just she doesn't really say no very much. And she just she kind of just wants to move on, just get past it kind of thing. And let's see. Yeah, and then we see her asleep, and and the the man there talks dirty, you know. And it is this. I think they found a really great balance between like what he's saying is kind of you know, and right. And to be clear, there's nothing wrong with talking dirty. You know, as long as like with anything else, sexual consent is the one thing that is is crucial. As long as there's consent. You know, yeah. Um, but the the yeah, some of what he says is the kind of stuff that that sometimes men say when they're when they're talking dirty. But it like it's right. It, it, yeah, it could also be interpreted as something that a misogynist would say to to you know yeah to a woman he hates. You know, so there is this, like, on, on some level, he hates her for agreeing to this. He hates her for the power that he feels she has over him with her conventional attractiveness. You know, yeah, I thought they did a, a really great job with with that. You know, because, uh, yeah, some of what he says is is not that, but but a little bit of it, you know... 
like what um yeah i think i have made my point and he seemingly puts out a cigarette although you know if they had like a prosthetic so so he could put out a cigarette without actually burning her skin let's see and yeah she very suddenly very abruptly leaves during class and it's you know, Birdman, and and you know, nice little bit. You know, we just she she picks up the this empty. You know, I have no idea what they're called, but the the little plates that you you push to get the pills out. You know, he took all those. You know, it's not necessary for us to see him take all those as long as she finds the the empty thing. And then, you know, before so so yeah, you know, he's he's lying there you know, seemingly ODing, and he asks her to take her shirt off, and, and she does, and, and you know, they, they lie together in bed for a while, and again, there's this, like, clearly, you know, the, yeah, there's some intimacy between the two of them. Maybe that's why some people, I... I'm not, I guess the word obsessed is excessive, but some people really seemed very preoccupied with, you know, wait, are are they dating or are they, you know, like, I, I don't think we're supposed to think that much about, I don't think they're dating. I think that they are acquaintances and just like, this is how she relates to other people. And I think that's much more meaningful than trying to suss out, wait, are they technically dating or are they I think some some people just like if they see a, a woman sexualize herself with a man they need for that woman to be in a in a committed monogamous relationship with that man otherwise they just they they you know it, it's really it provokes anxiety in them which you know I appreciate it just I don't know I try to keep at least some of my anxieties off camera off the internet but the um yeah and then you know once they're at the the funeral see this i definitely i'm not entirely so so yeah she's talking to they they must be like exes and he's with helen now and they talk about when did you last see him and she says four months ago and he says you know he was discovered two weeks after dying See, I don't know if that's supposed to mean that he... I don't think Birdman recovered from that. I think she's lying. I think she was there when he died, and then she left and didn't tell anyone because she, you know... Maybe she didn't want anyone to, to know. Maybe they would blame... Maybe she is worried they would blame her. Even though we saw her try to talk him into rehab, you know. But just, yeah, she, she doesn't really let people in. And I, I really appreciate that it is a consistent trait. That the movie doesn't, at, at any point, feel the need to, to slip in something that... You know, it's, it's a movie that's not afraid of an of a protagonist that's not particularly appealing as a person you know which sadly did leave some to to leave negative reviews saying you know how am i supposed to like a movie where i don't like the protagonist a lot of the best movies ever made have unlikable protagonists and and yeah like the the she asks him she asks her ex marry me and you know yeah he he basically says I like my current partner. I, I don't, you know, you had your chance. And, you know, yeah, he, he tells her, fuck you, several times. And, and yeah, like, I, I think the, the, she, when they were together, he wanted to marry her. And she turned him down and maybe even, like, turned him down hard. Like, this is, this is a pretty intense reaction for, like, you know, Birdman had a much more, you know, casual reaction. It, it was, 
you know, it seems like this is just the kind of thing she sometimes says to her friends, and it's meant to, like, because it, it doesn't have to be a joke. Saying, will you marry me, doesn't have to be a joke. But for her it is, and for Birdman it is. It's like, can you imagine, can you imagine one of us marrying the other? Yeah, right. Let's, you know, let's, let's walk to the moon, or, you know, yeah, you know, just something, you know, it's, it's completely absurd to them, and I, I'm not sure that she was expecting him to have that sort of reaction, but yeah, you know, if he, yeah, maybe that's it, maybe when he proposed to her back when they were together, maybe she acted like he was joking, maybe she laughed. And he couldn't really handle that. Like, his reaction is very strong for for something that other stuff in the movie suggests. It's just a joke. Like, it's maybe not a great joke, you know, maybe... But but his reaction is kind of intense. But yeah, I, I think, you know, maybe on some level... You know, some, sometimes when people are joking, when people are being sarcastic, some, sometimes sarcasm is a way of saying something you actually feel, but it's, you know, oh, you didn't think I was being serious, did you, kind of thing, you know, there's a, there's a, an air of, of, there's a safety blanket there, you know, but, yeah, I mean, maybe, like, I, I, she, I've already talked about it, she's lonely, so, you know, I'm, I'm not one of those people who say that, oh, you know, all young women should marry, you know, especially not marry men, but, yeah, I, th I think, we're supposed to take it as, you know, deep down, maybe she would like to, to marry someone. And, you know, and it is also that thing of, you know, funerals bring up the, you know, it, like, there's that thing about, you know, dying alone kind of thing. And, yeah, you know, uh, let's see. Yeah, then we get to the, the man who picks her up and carries her and and drops her and then sort of and and I gotta say when I read other reviews it it sounded like others thought that he did it on purpose it didn't quite look purposeful to me it looked to me like he thought he could carry her properly and and just ended up not quite able to I don't know maybe I'm misinterpreting it's possible and let's see. Yeah, and, and you know, she's fired from the office job and she, she says thank you. You know, because yeah, deep down she doesn't really want to be there. She just feels like she has to. And and yeah, she goes to the store to get a spy cam and they're doing that thing where you know the camera's hooked up to the TV so you can see the the quality and, and yeah. And let's see. Yeah, and we have that line about, you know, 27 minutes of deliberation, and then the master chose defeat. You know, and, and yeah, I think, you know, I, I don't know enough about that game to, to speak specifically to that, but for the movie, yeah, you know, she she's she is kind of choosing defeat. She she keeps making very self-destructive choices, you know. So so yeah, I I did think that was a good little yeah. And and she finds this woman sleeping on the train and and wipes away a little bit of of saliva. You know, on on some level, it it does bother her this thing of you know yeah, women being seen in compromising decisions and we have the thing about you know I got drugs what are they I don't know he doesn't he doesn't even know you know he's just oh it's 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 fun time who cares what why do you need to know what you're gonna what I'm trying to get you to put in your body you know the kind of thing it it you know yeah some things like that have a very negative effect on the you know, but but no, and and we get a very artsy shot, which yeah, you know the the shimmer on the water and and suddenly they reemerge, 
you know, that was very nicely done. And and yeah, you know, like seemingly they had fun. The the drugs were good. The the swim was good. Sex, I'm guessing, was good. Uh, you know, she's she's completely naked when they wake back up. That kind of implies like if they weren't going to have sex, I feel like she'd probably put on clothes. Like not you know, just because you're sleeping in the same bed with another person does not mean that you're going to have sex. But yeah, if there's no, if you don't put on clothes, that kind of, that can really imply that sort of, yeah. And, you know, yeah, for, for a while the, the phone rings and he's like, could you, just, could you shut that thing off, you know? And then the, the, yeah, she sees that it's from the, the Clara and, and Thomas, I think is his name. And, and yeah, goes with them and... Yeah, and and uh, I already forgot the, the yeah the guy who with the the drugs points out you don't have any blinds you know it's it's like even when she's at home the world can see her and and you know she sometimes sleeps naked so the world can see her naked kind of thing you know let's see and. Then we have yeah. Uh, so she talks to the she talks to Clara and says, "You know, can I just once see what they're what they're doing?" And it's a no. And then we see that she hid the spy cam, which you know she tested in class. She hid it in her mouth and puts it up so that she can yeah. And and Clara you know finds the man and I've seen. Um, I've seen some theorize that the man intentionally committed suicide. You know, he wanted to die sleeping next to uh, a young woman. And, you know, this is also one of the few times we see Clara actually moved by something, you know. And, yeah, the, the, um, let's see, um, yeah, you know, the, the fact that she has to perform mouth to mouth yeah like you know the the um, ah, what's the word um i'm not 100% certain but it kind of seems like maybe the the Yeah, um, maybe he, maybe the the man gave her something. You know the that, yeah, you know. Because like I I don't think it was just the anesthetic she was given. I I don't think that would actually mean that she would have she would need mouth to mouth resuscitation. So even even if she's being you know, woken up prematurely, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure, n n yeah, seemingly, you know, he, maybe he wanted to take someone with him, you know, but yeah, and, and yeah, I already mentioned, you know, I think the, the scream is, is very effective, and yeah, the, the movie ends with the, the spy cam footage, and yeah, you know, it's it's not quite clear if this is like the last time that um, Lucy engages in this or or not. Um, I don't know if maybe the fact that he died right next to her, if that's supposed to be. Like, uh, certainly, if he did try to, to kill her, and, and, you know, Clara managed to, you know, it, yeah, Clara seemingly saved, yes, moving on. If she, if, if this man tried to, to kill this woman, you know, yeah, that's another, you know, that's not a, that's not necessarily a sexual thing, but it is an objectification thing. He treated her as, uh, you know, like I, you know, I mentioned for the funeral we have. Oh, right. Momentarily, 
There we go. Um, yeah, during, you know, during the funeral, it's like this thing of, you know, I don't want to die alone kind of thing. You know, and, and I don't think it's accidental that there's relatively little screen time between those two scenes. You know, it, it plants the idea in our in our head. But yeah, the the um, what's the word? Uh, yeah, you know, he he thinks that he owns her body to the point where it is okay for him to kill her just so he's not alone in in death. You know, just yeah. So, so, pretty, pretty chilling, you know, and I acknowledge, I, you know, I'm not saying my interpretation is the only right one. This is the end of the video. Hit me up in the comments. What, you know, do you have an alternate interpretation of this? If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page. Once you more links to stuff like relevant playlists. For, uh, Wow. A suggestive video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie. I recently reviewed thoughts videos tend them out very similar to this one. In other words, if you more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog, so I'll catch you next week. I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching the recording, and I will catch you next time.